Are we on? Are we live? Yeah. Hello, Booskateers. Tiki King here. It's Tuesday night. And you don't know what that means. It means I'm drunk already. So, welcome. Welcome to Tuesday. Well, not what, but welcome to my show, which happens to be also Tuesday night. We're just, it's Tuesday night. Is it? Yeah. It's the second day of the week. If you're on the G Gregorian, no. The Sunday, the first day of the week? Monday. The Gregorian calendar. I heard there'd be no math. No, but well, if we so if we so the seven days, if we eliminate six of them, we're left with one, which is today, All right. which is Tuesday, which we're gonna say is the we're gonna, we're, we're gonna say this is the beginning of the week for booze Kateers, Tuesday begins your week because Monday, you just throw that away, forget about it. You you already you came out of the weekend, you were at work and you were hungover the whole time, you don't remember it. So Tuesday is the day that you're actually this morning you probably were okay, but now you're drunk again. So welcome to Tuesday, booze Kateers, and welcome to cocktails of. King. Tonight's a very special episode uh, because I look so fabulous. Profile shot. Cheers. Um, no, because <laughs> this is uh, this is not well. We're not going by the Gregorian calendar tonight. So this is the two-year anniversary of the show. Mm -hmm. We've done. Uh, yeah, it started. Uh, it started. Well, technically it would be Thursday, but we're going to be eat, most people eat turkey on Thursday, um, which is not a cocktail. Even if, but you can put it in a cocktail glass. It's still turkey. That's what they tell me. Um, but uh, yeah, so <laughs> so and, this show. And you're starting the show empty. I know, I know because well, bad start already. <laughs> yeah, well, it's actually a good start that it's empty. I always said people are like your drink's empty. I'm like that's a good sign. That means that two things. One, I've had one, and I'm probably going to get another. Around here, we call it your drink's broken. Your my drink me, is broken. Let me fix that. That's right. They say. Is the glass half empty? Is the glass half full? I always have kind of a half ass full kind of guy. So, uh, so, yes, two years. We've been doing this madness for two years now. This started out, so it started out um, two years ago. I live streamed my soup. I was making soup. So I live streamed my soup, and it, it uh, uh, I think three people were very excited about it. Soup with tiki. No, I made, well, I made soup. I made a big pot oh. of soup, and it was cooking, but I didn't let them see it until it was ready. But, uh, so then after that, I had this brainstorm, and uh, so I contacted producer Maggie, who was just Maggie at that time. She wasn't producer Maggie yet. <laughs> but, uh, and I said, I have this idea, I'm going to do this show. Do this show from now till uh, New Year's. It's five weeks. So I said, I'm going to do this show, and I'm going to make drinks, and I'm going to get drunk. And she said, where are you going to do it? I said, I don't know, I'm in my kitchen. And she said, no, you're not going to do that. I'll be there in tomorrow. And so she like drove there from Utah. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, six like like they live in Santa Cruz. Um, so uh, yeah, so then she, we set it up and we decided to do an actual like a coherent show, which didn't pan out. So we did what we do now. So uh, yeah, so happy accidents. Happy accidents. Yeah, so it's supposed to be five shows. So I did the math, which you know you love to do. I did it for you. We are now one thousand nine hundred percent over quota, which I think is pretty good. Yeah. For a show that was supposed to fail, the fans wouldn't let it. Yeah, I think oh, they yeah. found. Uh, I think they. Uh, I think they find solace in the fact that there's someone who's doing worse than them. <laughs> every every Tuesday night. I will drink to that. Every. <laughs> I, I think I have enough. To. I won't drink Actually, without you, know you though. Well, so here we are. We are at the home of Lucky Tuck. And that's it. That's that's the man in the flesh. Not as much flesh as usual, but. Uh, <laughs> I've lost but weight. Are you we'll talking about that? Good? Yes, you look fab <laughs> fabulous. Um, and uh, not only not only is there Lucky Tuck the the entity, but there's Lucky Tuck the drink, which is what we're going to be uh, starting with tonight. And uh, I've already started with them, uh, and I have to say I'm pleased with the effect. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a good it's a good thing. So uh, for those of you who uh, CJ who's saying get to drinking already, I did, uh, but we're going to do some more. Um, so lucky, so lucky. Tell me about the Lucky Tuck. Okay, that's first, enough. Anyway, <laughs> first of all, who are you, and how did you get in my house? I'm Tiki King, and <laughs> I carry a set of bump keys with me. And I saw your lights were on, which meant either right. the house was empty and there was a timer, or maybe there was booze involved. All right. So back to the lucky. Should we So lucky. Tell me about the lucky talk. Uh, for legal reasons, we'd like to change that to the Grandpa Tuck. Oh. I didn't want my name associated with the drink. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> because there's been many accidents. We can actually we can self-censor it. So lucky. Tell me about the talk. 
Good job. All right, well, this drink was a complete mistake. Well, in the beginning. In the beginning, yes. Uh, not in the end. It's become a favorite. Actually, it's become a local favorite, and people come and request this all the time. There's even one or two bars that serve it now. Really? Fantastic. So, in Utah, they don't serve it legally because it has a couple of shots, which you can do here. Yep, yep. Uh, but would you like me to make you one I would. and explain it? I would. All right. So I, I learned about the couple of shots things. We were getting a, we were having, I had a Long Island iced tea in a restaurant. And they asked me if I wanted another one. And I said yes. And they said, no, you can't have one because it has three shots of alcohol in it. So Yeah. So this begins with a little bit of ice with wonderfully clean hands. And then... Um, Many people are going to kill me for this, but I like to use Hendrix. It's the gin I like of choice, but most people say you shouldn't be mixing that with anything. You know, that's what they say about a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now, some of you talk on the show a lot of times. I, I have uh, several bartender friends. Who, who are making uh, uh, tropical cocktails and they're using all these super high-end, really, um, really uh, characteristic rums to make these tropical cocktails. And I'm like, the, you know, they're like, why would you use any, why would you use cheap? You should be using the same thing you would drink neat. And I'm like, because the whole reason behind a lot of cocktails is to mask how nasty the alcohol that you're using is. Yeah. But, so I figured, you know, We've, we've progressed to a point where you can pretty much drink anything you like. Well, on my show, you can drink anything you like, and I'll drink it with you. Because, you know, I've made the perfect martini <laughs> and washed it down with a Pabst Blue Ribbon, so. All right, well. I have no shame. Christy's put ice in her wine, so. <laughs> hey, I did that once at a wedding. Oh. That's, probably why I'm, that's probably why I'm not married. At least I don't put Red Bull. Yeah. Red Bull. I've heard. I heard like, about the, the like someone we know, not a producer or anything. I heard about. <laughs> I've heard about improving wine with Red Bull. Somebody that um, wine was improved. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we're using Hendrix gin tonight. Hendrix, for those of you who don't know, is a Scottish gin. It's a, I'm a little it's, partial to the Scottish. And it's very, you know, it's funny because the first time I saw Hendrix gin, I thought Scottish gin. What, what's that all about? Until I realized, you know, England is where gin comes from. Well, Holland, I guess. But Holland and England made it popular, and I thought, that's really not and, that far-fetched. Yeah, anything the British do, the Scottish can do better. So. Not, it wouldn't be like Jamaican gin, <laughs> which apparently is, is a... Never mind. I haven't heard of that Never one. mind. Just forget I said that. We digress. Yes, we digress. All right, so this begins with two shots of gin, which sounds like a civil enough drink. That sounds like a recipe for fighting. It's like to say gin is a fighting alcohol. If you want to, if you want to get a fight, gin is your friend. It will right. both uh, inspire you and console you later. Well, and this is the part of the drink where we we might have some fights. Okay. Because I, uh, you might say I pollute this drink. So now we have some of the finest gin available. With something most people would think abhorrent. <sighs> but before I add it, I'm going to tell you why. Okay. All right, this, this uh, particular drink came about after a very large birthday party. <laughs> and that went probably till 3 or 4 a.m. And we all slept in and around noon we woke up. And of course, the first thing we thought was, are there any drinks left? <laughs> As one would. <laughs> so we went and we looked at the cooler and the drinks and there was some bad beer, which isn't the best morning brew, but three things were left. There was some limes, there was a bottle of gin, not Hendrix, cheap gin, and somebody, I don't know who, because it's not something that normally shows up at my parties, had brought a six pack of Mike's Hard Lemonade. Hmm. And we thought, all right, let's do it. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> you don't know who? I don't know who brought the Mike's Hard Lemonade. No. Oh, producer Maggie. The, oh, the, the, jig, the jig is up. <laughs> <laughs> so, after all this time. I didn't know. Said, you didn't know. By the way, the same person who 
Well, I wasn't supposed to say this, but the same was the first who put Red Bull in their wine. Ah, uh, <laughs> brought this is brought the Mike's lemonade. This is like the end of that movie, The Prestige. <laughs> it was Maggie all along. Yeah. So anyway, here we go with the Mike's Hard Lemonade. So Mike's Hard Lemonade, for those of you who don't know, is a malt beverage flavored with lemons and uh, booze. Not flavored with booze. And it's, it's actually, booze flavored it, with lemons. It, it's a really a nice light carbonated alcoholic drink, probably vodka or something. I've never really even cared to look. I think it's industrial ethanol. Yeah, that sounds right. No, I believe it's a malt beverage, which I don't I, It's But it's about 5% alcohol. It's about one shot, I would imagine. Is that about what you get out of a 5% alcoholic? Drink? If you're, yeah, if, you're, if, you're, if you drink the whole thing, it's about equivalent to a shot. So we have two shots of gin, and I've never drank these on their own and probably wouldn't. But when you mix them, when it's morning after a party, it becomes, well, party or not, even this is the beginning of your night, this has become a magical drink. This blew me away because I normally wouldn't drink these, but you throw it on two shots of gin and some ice. And again, these normally are bottles, but tonight I, I only had cans. Um, so about one bottle of Mike's Hard Lemonade and two shots of gin. Squeeze of lime. A squeeze of lime, as much for beauty as taste. And that's a damn fine drink. So, yeah. But, but there's I, one more thing. But wait, but wait, there's more. I don't know if anyone can see this. Is it rabbit poo? Is it goat poo? Trick cam. No one knows. No one knows, but it's in a jar. This is the secret. Secret ingredient, which don't came much grabbing, later. Don't be grabbing my nuts. We you, we didn't your own jar. We didn't have this originally, but me and Christy have learned to really like these. And we're in Italy, and we come across across a, a gin drink one night, and they'd had these little brown things in it. And we asked him, "Well, that's wonderful. What is it?" And he says, "Well, it's it's gin, carbonated lemonade, and." Juniper berries, which gin is distilled from juniper. Yeah. So we thought, well, it goes along with the gin theme, and it makes the drink a little prettier. So you just take a couple of those, sprinkle them in there. And I found, I, from, uh, from earlier, I found they make a good snack. Really? No. They're, they're, don't chew them. <laughs> Do not chew them. That's, that's, that's like what? peppercorns. Yeah, <laughs> no. They're, which, uh, so... There you have it. Uh, it's lovely. It's colorful. Well, at least well, the lime and the... White is a color. Ish. Yeah. And believe it or not, the Mike's Hard Lemonade is transformed with the gin and the lime into... Into the tuck. Is, is there... I don't know if they bleep us or not, but it becomes fucking awesome. Maybe we should have, to have like that, uh, the Muddy Farmer. The, it becomes the awesome. Murray Tuck. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, I've already had one, so I don't need. But I'll, but I'll, but I'll, hey, you know I've never tried this. It's good enough. Are you gonna have one? It's good enough. I'm you. sorry, I just made one. But I'll make another one for the I hope we're paying attention. We have to catch up though, because I was gonna toast you on your birthday. Oh yeah, it was uh, my birthday on the 14th. Uh, thank you, all of those of, of you who sent me the birthday wishes, including uh, at the theater. I was ambushed by some boozketeers who came. I don't know about ambush. They uh, they hit me over the head with a bucket of popcorn. And uh, then drug me around <laughs> screaming, but no, that's not true. Uh, there wasn't any popcorn. Well, um, I was going to toast you at the beginning of the show, but you didn't have a drink, so now I do. Cheers! Cheers! Yeah, uh, which I would like to give. A I'm sorry I didn't have a pin uh, for the booze who uh, who found me down at the theater. But uh, find me again, and maybe I'll have one. I don't know. It's hard to say. I don't know what I, I never know what's going to happen. I'm going to make uh, I'm gonna a, couple, this. You, a couple make of these. Okay. Make one for me and, and a couple for our amazing, highly paid studio audience. Yay! That's good. Magpie, would you like one? Producer now, and Magpie? Um, sure, I'll have one. I think the first party that I came to where I ended up wearing a fur vest, I was I drinking like I the, uh, the Lucky Tux. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's why you the ended up party, in a fur vest. The first party that where I ended up in a fur vest, yes, was here drinking the Lucky Tux. And I was, and, um, I was warned... Which your question. Yes, I was warned... Uh, which my my question, which is, was was 
I'll get to that one in a minute. But uh, I was on my third one when I was warned not to drink two. So, uh, which could have, could account for the fervent. Do you know the, the danger which of these? Which I'd put that on now, but what? Yeah, the danger of these is that people drink these and they don't taste any alcohol. No, they don't. Because people mask really bad alcohol with lime and things all the time. Uh, this is actually a really, you know, gin is mixed with a lemonade is already a very subtle drink. This is a three shot drink and people chug these like it's water. Yeah, they do. It's, it goes so, down easy. That's the thing. So these do sneak up on you and that's why the name changed from Lucky Tuck to somebody named Tuck, Grandpa Tuck, Grandmother Tuck, somebody that can't trace it back to me directly. So I'd like to make sure that these are no longer called Lucky Tuck. Okay. <laughs> For liability reasons. It's, it's a liability tuck. tuck. Yeah. The liability tuck. Ooh, that's a good name. <clears throat> Which is, I think, it went more uh, descriptive as well. Or the, it's not my fault, nobody saw me, you can't prove anything tuck. That's true. So, uh, so uh, Producer Maggie, I believe the question she was alluding to. So we were, um, we were in uh, Frankie's, Frankie's Tiki Room in Las Vegas. Have you been to Frankie's yet? I haven't. Oh, you should go there, it's fantastic. Uh, Frankie's Tiki Room, for those of you who don't know, which we might be surprised uh, of the Blue Skateers, uh, is a tiki bar in Vegas. It's our favorite. We call it actually we call it our Northern Field office. Um, it's our favorite tiki bar in Vegas, and uh, we spend as much time there as we can. But uh, they have a lot of um, uh, uh, very uh, colorful descriptions of the cocktails that they make there because they're mostly all tropical cocktails, and they have a whole menu of their originals. Um, and one of their cocktails is called the Tangerine Speedo. Ooh. And it says that after three, you will wear the speedo. Yeah. So I thought, so you, maybe we need to, we need for this for this house uh, because I've had, I've been to a couple of parties here. I think you need a drink called the Golden Speedo. Oh, well the, uh, I I may have to call in my body double, David, for the Golden <laughs> Speedo because Christie's banned me from wearing the Golden Boy shorts. Oh. Uh. Uh, I was going to say, so how many, lucky, how many liability cuts would it take to get you to don the golden speedo? Well, let's, let's see. Let's find out. <laughs> a one. That's what this show's all two. about. <laughs> so. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Booze Cateers. Cheers. 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 Ah. Splendid. Yep. And uh, so we were milling about the kitchen having ourselves some delectable samples from the sh sh uh, sh <laughs> chartreuse. Chartreuse. It's a it's a, a, a meat and cheese and stuff on a plate, um, which has a fancy name. And we so we, when we weren't trying to pronounce it, uh, actually, uh, they were, you were talking about the pisco sour. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a fine bottle of pisco. Yeah, and uh, well, I brought that up for some reason. Well, that's another drink that. Lime, it's it's they take a, a really bad tasting alcohol, I think. Uh, and sorry, I know uh, pisco, pisco yeah. may be done in shots somewhere around the world, but I I suspect that it's always mixed because <laughs> it's a very harsh drink. It probably uh, is just distilled very high alcohol content and, and drank very direct. And the pisco sour, most of South America, I believe. Uh, enjoys this drink. Yeah, which that's that's why I, uh, I want to give a shout out to all of my Peruvian bartender friends down there who, who are watching the show. I don't know if any of them are watching live. They might watch it later. Um, I actually did a. There's a show. There's a TV. Well, uh, Bar TV Peru, mm -hmm. and they had me do one of their station IDs. You know, I'm Tiki King, and you're watching Bar TV Peru. Um, but uh, yeah, I got a, a birthday wish from from the Pisco fam, the family who owns the the Pisco distillery. Ah. Which was, yeah. Which well, was you, like, yeah, you can't travel through South America without getting a Pisco Sour. They're proud of them, and they're different everywhere you go. Yeah. Uh, me and Christy sat down in a bar, and we said, well, what's a Pisco Sour? And the guy says, oh, well, let me show you. And he didn't charge us for the first three drinks because he wanted to show us three varieties. Wow. Somehow. Yeah. Peru. Yeah. And so we only had to order one because we'd already had three and were pretty drunk by that point. But um, some have more, uh, is it egg white? Uh, it's a blended egg white and a lot of lime. 
uh, is the basic simple syrup and, or something. Yeah, and this was in Peru, uh, in the Miraflores area, which is kind of the big restaurant dining area in Lima, Peru. But from what I understand, it's pretty similar north and south of there, except for some people add a little more egg white or a little more lime or a little more pisco, and, and there may be other variations. Well, probably like the like the whiskey sour. Yeah, so I'd imagine. There's there's all, all sorts of different recipes for those, and uh, everybody claims theirs are the best. But it's a good example of how lime, like in this drink, can mask the alcohol, and you don't realize how much you've had, because... <laughs> Really, you just start to drink those things and think, oh, well, this is just a sweet little cocktail. Like, what well, you almost think you're drinking lemonade. Well, yeah, that, which, like I said, that's, that was one of the reasons that a lot of cocktails came about was to mask uh, the taste of the alcohol, which were, you know, in the birth of the, of the cocktail thing. Uh, most alcohol that you get was pretty nasty. So, you know, and in fact, I, on one of my shows, I talked about one of the earliest known cocktails was actually a tonic, um, which was discovered by, I don't know, Captain Cook, somebody. They were on one of the islands and the old men were sick. They had mm -hmm. scurvy, of course. Um, but they were mixing the native uh, alcohol with limes and, and sugar cane. And lime cured the scurvy, but they didn't yeah. know that. No, they didn't. So, the, of course, they all drank a lot of alcohol. Oh, yes, they all had to drink that tonic because <laughs> I'm sick, Doc. I need the tonic. Uh, I've been there. <laughs> I have been t Doctor, I need some tonic. Uh, well. <sighs> well, that's a good thing. I think that's a happy Damn accident, it. as they call that. It was a very happy accident. Thank you, Bob Ross. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize I was being inadvertently hip. <laughs> so what else? What else? There's something else. I'm sure there's other things. Uh, I have a whole notebook full of stuff I'm supposed to talk about, but I never bring it with me. I just sit and I look at it and go, that's not relevant anymore. Yeah. But, uh, we had that's the mirror. We mm -hmm. were we were drinking wine when we started, so we had the charcuterie. The charcuterie. 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 But since we're having lucky tucks, which is was kind of a we're switching to, I'm going to grab his nuts. It was <laughs> it was um an accident, and I didn't think lucky tucks were necessarily a high class drink, so we pulled out oh, the, yeah. the Doritos, which I highly recommend as a complimentary snack. Which well, I'm not, not really I'm much. I'm because it means... I can open up a whole thing, so I got pairing. There, you know what? Speaking of pairings, my favorite pairing with Doritos is actually pastis. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? It's a French drink, and it's so funny because it's so strong. It's like a black licorice. It's kind of like... Uh, what's Maggie's drink? The Absinthe. Absinthe. And I used to think, well, what goes with this? And I couldn't find any of this. And then it was Doritos is the perfect match for pasties or absinthe. And it's like, oh, we went with like, ooh la la, French. And then we, we digressed right to the Doritos, and it was a perfect pairing. It's one of those opposites attract things. Well, you know, I'll bet, though, if you, if you framed it right, you say, well, I get to some masa, roll out very thin, I bake it in the oven until it's crispy. Uh, I use a light dusting of a very sharp cheddar cheese powder, you know, and it, it's Doritos. But you, but you can have people like, oh, I'm gonna try that, you know. What's masa? It's a. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, you lost me at masa. Corn. Oh. <laughs> it's cornmeal. I was trying. I believe. Yeah. Really hard to focus on that one. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you these are sneaky. They are <laughs> sneaky bastards. But I like it. I'm pleased with the results. As I say, I'm pleased with the results. Results. I don't know if your audience is, I'm pleased, I'm but we to, are. <laughs> that's the best part. You guys can go home now. Yeah. We got, we got work to do. Cheers. We're done. What time is it? Oh, shit. We still have a half we hour. We still have a half hour. <laughs> well, that was a good two minutes of the show. <clears throat> that's happened before. I've actually gotten into it. I was like, okay, and now what's next? And Meg's like, nothing even on for 40 minutes. Like, oh. I digressed. I digress too many times, but but so when you're not drinking Lucky Tucks, I've heard that you uh, that you're a bootlegger. Hmm. I've heard that that's a felony in Utah. So sorry. Of course I'm not. Sorry. So when one is not uh, drinking Lucky Tucks, I've heard that one is a bootlegger. 
I've heard that it's a wonderful no. project. Now here's a question, could hypothetically one, speaking. Could one do it? If someone were to want to make their own alcohol, is that possible? If one was. If one was to do that, yes. Well, one wants one's whiskey, you know. I'll delve into that subject, because if one was, and if one had a daughter who was a chemical engineer, mm -hmm. it seems like it would be a fun project. Of course, not for us. We're law abiding citizens. Yeah, but if one did have, I'd imagine it would be fun to explore the distillation process and to produce the best alcohol possible. Not for the sake of getting cheap alcohol, just because one would like to try to have something amazing that they made themselves, like any other process. And this is completely hypothetical, but it sounds like a fun project. Now, one of the, uh, actually, um, there, uh, uh, Modern Drunkard magazine, one of the 12 steps to being a drunkard is to produce your own alcohol. Hmm. Well, I, I actually am not a drunkard. But you could be. I used to be... An, if one wanted to be. I used to be an alcoholist, which is much different than an alcoholic. An alcoholist... Less licking involved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never thought of it that way. <laughs> but now I'm a winist, as opposed to a wino. But I, I, I've, <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've moved towards winist because uh, as I get older, I realize I probably shouldn't be an alcoholist as much as I have been. Well, wasn't that one of the Peanuts characters, winist? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A security bottle. Did you say penis characters? Or? <laughs> That's what it sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, that is a name for a penis character, but. <laughs> I'm sorry, this show's going downhill. <laughs> so we're headed towards distillation of alcohol. Yes. Let us get back on track. <clears throat> it's one of the first times I brought somebody else back on track, so. <laughs> so tell me about this hypothetical distillation. Well, hypothetically, it's a it's a it's a beautiful art form, and it's a, I think it's a wonderful thing to explore if you just enjoy quality alcohol, and you want to know how it's made. And even if you never achieve the kind of alcohol that you buy at the store, I think just learning the process alone is is worth the venture because it makes you appreciate how hard it is to really make good alcohol. Seems like it'd bring up a lot of uh, questions about how I, you know, I often wonder out loud about how did who was it like? Hey, if we boil this stuff, you know, who I, I can see how you can, I see I can see how you can get uh, beers or wines because that's yeah. just stuff going bad. Yeah, you know, but eating it anyway because you're starving. They're fermented. And, yeah, uh, but I always thought, but then who had? You know, what we should do is boil this and capture the vapors. I wonder who that's was one of those the first guy. Of, it's like the first guy who thought, you know, I mean. We're human, we kind of like kill and eat everything. But who was the, the first guy to eat like a bird? He's like, see that that thing flying right there? I'm gonna kill that and eat it. Somebody hungry. Yeah. I would think. Because <laughs> there's like stuff all around him. Yeah. And I wonder if they took it, they first just like ate it like a, you know, feathers on <laughs> Just bite right in. Yeah, took a bite. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't yeah. know. But I, as somebody who like studies and, and does a podcast on alcohol, you really don't know where distillate. I don't know where distillation no, no, I, came I, from. I, that's one of those things I'm wondering. No, but I mean, I, I, I sort of know the, I know the science behind it and how it all works, but I wonder who, who came, who had that idea of, you know, did they go, man, the oatmeal's gone bad. Maybe if we cook it some more, you know, and, you know, leave it over the top And, of, and the liquid come here, that comes come out. Yeah, breathe this stuff. The steam is awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the guy who took the first sip was probably a distant relative of Helen Keller because could be because he probably couldn't see afterwards, <laughs> but but I've wondered where that, that what that where that leap came from. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't blind never, drunk. I shouldn't digress to Helen Keller jokes and blind drunk, but <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I think I think they can see what you're talking about, though. <laughs> anyway, <But> anyway, <laughs> somebody wonderfully for us and for probably the majority of your viewers figured out how alcohol was distilled. 
and uh, it got better and better and better. And I, uh, I went into it for a while, hypothetically. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you were, you can imagine yourself going into it. For yeah, a while. I imagined it. I pictured it. And um, you know, I, I started out with a friend who um, made beer and wine. So I think it's almost the same process. You start by fermenting something that becomes sugar, mm -hmm. and then you distill that sugar into pure alcohol. And a lot of people end up trying different kinds of sugars, fruits and grains, uh, to try to change the taste a little bit in one way or the other. But distillation pretty much pulls out almost pure alcohol with very little flavor to it. Um, in the end, I think from what I've imagined in my little theory or my little imaginary distillation process is that it's what you do with it afterwards that's that just as there. important as what you did with it from the beginning because it's all sugars in the beginning. Yeah. And well, for uh, those of you who don't who don't know some of the chemistry, so sugar, uh, basically when you introduce yeast into sugar, the yeast eat the sugar and excrete alcohol. So once they've, uh, once they're done eating, once they've eaten all there is to eat and excreted all there is to excrete, you end up with this stuff, whether it's wine or, or beer, that has the alcohol, the alcohol. in it. Yeah. And that's where the term, I understand scientifically, shit eating grin comes from because it's basically excretion <laughs> well that's the thing there's a Kurt Vonnegut uh, I believe wrote a story that was based on these it was these two characters talking about all their lives and what they were going to do and they didn't realize that they were actually just ye two yeast organisms because they were at this b banquet and there's all you can eat he wrote a whole book on this. No, it wrote just a short story <laughs> it, might have been Kurt, it might have actually not been Kurt Vonnegut but Kilgore Trout which was one of his um, uh, alter egos but it was a conversation between these two people that turned out to be yeast <laughs> making champagne. And, and I wouldn't doubt that our lives amount to something similar. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so, but I'd like to think that I'm excreting something <laughs> of value, or drinking something of mm. great excretion. Shitting grin. I hadn't heard that one. Yeah, I hadn't either. I'll just now. So you made it up? <laughs> you heard it here. That's right. We're going to credit uh, Tuck with that one. I'm self-censoring. Are we done? <laughs> you can be. Is the show over? No. Nope. What the hell? No. We've got... We're not even, no, we're not even close. We're, we're, we've just Is got this to... Is this a half hour show or an hour show? Usually a half hour, but... Either one. Oh, I thought well, it was I don't know. Should we keep going? Because we can let the audience decide. If they're gone, if they're already... If they're, if they've already abandoned ship, then we're just drinking amongst ourselves, which is okay too. For some reason, I always thought this was a one hour show. It's been a one hour show before. That depends on how drunk I am and meaning to ramble. But I say we press on. So, so you determined that one could produce one's own alcohol through science. Yes, I did. A very expensive career by sending my daughter through six years of education, uh, just so I could build a steel. Probably the most, if any of you are thinking of doing this, it's probably the worst route to build a hundred thousand dollars in order to put a cheap bottle of whiskey. Yeah, to, to make really bad alcohol and find out these guys are good. I'm a deaf for the rest of my life. Yeah, but you got free booze. Good enough. So. Yeah, but it was a wonderful learning process. I really did enjoy it. And um, I think it makes you, it really makes you appreciate everything you drink and what it took to make a good alcohol. Well, I think even beer drinkers go through this and a lot of people can distill legally, uh, or I mean distill, you know, they make their own beers and wines at home. And I think it makes them have a greater appreciation, which you'll see in the influx of all these new micro brews they appreciated it and competition grew and it's a, it's a wonderful thing. It made America become actually a beer item on the world map. We have some of the best microbrews now in the world. 
Yeah. And that's so, and those of you who don't know, we talked about it before, but Utah uh, on November 1st went to full strength beers available at supermarkets and uh, truck stops and gas stations and whatnot. Yeah, so you can now go in there. It's a yeah, no longer no longer the uh, three point two. It's did whatever. you see the Budweiser Clydesdales came to town? I heard about that. I heard about they that. had a funeral for three point two beer, oh. and Budweiser sent their Clydesdale saying, "Thank God you guys finally quit making us make a special brew just for you." Yep. And they buried it, nice. and they sent the Clydesdales and had a little parade with a coffin and everything. It's pretty right. sweet. So getting back, I have to say, so uh, so someone made their own whiskey. Did some uh, some studying, did some microbiology, figured out uh, some different things to uh, to be able to uh, age some stuff a little faster than normal aging, and I tried some of the product that was obtained from who knows where, and I have to say, pleased with the, with the result. Good stuff. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad you like it. Yeah. I, I'd say the majority of the hard work was not the distillation, which is a pretty straightforward process. The one thing um, I hypothetically learned was that. If you just take the heart, you get rid of the beginning, and you get rid of the end, which starts to taint, to taint or burn the taste of the I alcohol. I hate when my taint's burning. Yeah, a, a burning taint, never a good thing, no. in any scenario. If you go to a bar and they offer you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have three specials. Yeah. One is the burning taint, pass on that one right away. Um, <laughs> that greatly increased the, the taste of alcohol by not trying to get as much alcohol as you could possibly get out of the distillation. Sticking with the best and discarding, you know, the beginning and the end. Everybody knows you discard the beginning because at a lower temperature, that's the alcohol that's poisonous. It's kind well, of what makes you go blind. Ethanol, but it's also got all the oils that are... And that's at a lower heat. And it's as your temperature is rising, the lower stuff that's distilled is the poison stuff. Until you reach a heat level, uh, then you're getting what's poisonous. The problem is, everybody knows to throw that out, but at the end, they've still got a quarter of a pot of alcohol, and they keep that, because they think, well, that's more, we're already doing this, that's more alcohol. Well, it's just like a burnt food. If you have something that's cooked well, it's beautiful to a point, but you go too far and you get a bitterness. And I learned that if you cut it off and throw away that last part, even though you know you can get another gallon or two out of it, that's the beauty of your distillation. And people who are get a little greedy or want that extra alcohol, and they add it to everything else, adds that bitterness to the flavor. Yeah. So, well, so if one is going to be distilling their own, discard the heads and tails. And, uh, and do study about charcoal microtubes. And aging. Aging was the second thing that takes much longer than the distillation process, but just adds a beautiful glory. Hopefully nobody's noticed the aging that I've done since I had that shot. Yeah. I haven't, but my beard's a little <laughs> more aged. It's not a competition. <laughs> Keep holding on. Change it. Lucky. Lucky. All righty, Boosketeers. Ah, here it is, another Tuesday night. Thank you all for tuning in, and uh, thank you for to our lovely host, uh, uh, Lucky and Christy, for allowing us to invade their home and for making some fantastic drinks and a shirt sure, 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 sure. yeah. a meat and cheese platter and Doritos and Doritos. Yeah, don't forget the Doritos. And uh, we didn't wear the gold speedo tonight yet, but we could. The night is still. Luckily, out. Maggie knows when to cut off a podcast. That's true. <laughs> Alrighty, and as I always say, good night and good drinking.